Hey everybody, it's Justin Shackle with Yankees On Demand presented by AT&T. We're getting you set for the final leg of the Yankees nine game homestand against the team with the best record in the American League, the Texas Rangers. Texas has built a huge gap between them and second place Houston in the American League West and are arguably playing their best brand of baseball right now. Since May 20th, the Rangers are 27 and 8, which is the best record in all of baseball. With plenty of winning comes winning on the road. The Rangers do that too, as they own a 21 and 15 road record this season. This could arguably be the Yankees' most difficult opponent to date. Now, the best work the Yankees have done this season has come against teams playing outside of the American League East. They're 17 and 7 in their last 24 games against non-division opponents, and in 20 games against teams in the AL West this season, the Yankees are averaging nearly five runs in almost 10 hits per game. While the pitching staff has held West opponents to a 2.41 batting average to go along with over eight whiffs per game. Now, despite going hitless on Sunday, Brett Gardner has been unconscious at the plate lately. He had a three-hit day on Saturday and is hitting 3.42 this month to go with an 8.10 OPS, all while scoring 18 runs. The 2-3 combination of Gardner and Carlos Beltran has been lethal lately. That must continue against Texas. In Game 1 on Monday night, Ivan Nova will start opposite Chichi Gonzalez. Nova has hit a bump in 2016, where he's allowed at least three runs in six consecutive starts. In order for the right-hander to snap out of his funk, he must be ahead in the count early and often. And at bats where Nova is ahead with two strikes, opponents are hitting 167. Nova has also fared better at home this season, pitching to a 3.63 earned run average at Yankee Stadium. In Game 2, it'll be CC Sabathia against Cole Hamels. This is undoubtedly the featured pitching matchup of the series. Both lefties combined for a 13-5 record to go along with a sub-3 ERA. Sabathia will look to bounce back after his first rough outing of the season in his last start against Colorado, where he only went four and a third innings. He still pitched like an all-star in 2016, and watching how he responds from his outing on Wednesday is a key storyline in the series. In the third game, Masahiro Tanaka takes the ball against Nick Martinez. Tanaka's coming off back-to-back -back wins over the Twins, and he did it with plenty of command as well. He recorded seven strikeouts on Friday, while also keeping the ball in the park for the second straight start. If Tanaka can produce the same results against the team that enters the week with the most wins in baseball, it could elevate Tanaka's season from very good to great. In the series finale on Thursday afternoon, Michael Pineda and A.J. Griffin are the starters. Pineda has averaged six innings and five starts in June, where he's posted a three ERA. The righty provided his most dominant stuff on Saturday, allowing a season low two hits over six innings while racking up eight strikeouts, mainly with his devastating slider, generating 14 swinging strikes along the way. Regardless of the opponent, Pineda will be tough to beat if he continues to pitch the way he has in June. The Yankees went 11-7 over an 18-game stretch against opponents at or below 500. And now with the AL's best in town, the Yankees can make a serious statement to the rest of the American League with a positive showing this week. For Yankees On Demand, presented by AT&T, I'm Justin Shackle. You can see more Yankees On Demand and Yankee scoreboard content by clicking here. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel right there.